impacted my life greatly. And they've already gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, Jerry's grandmother passed away just this past March. But both of them left an amazing, uh, amazing legacy for the Lord. And that is what I have the privilege of sharing with you today. I'd like to put up a picture of my papa for you to see. So you can see who um, this woman is that I will share about. The picture on the left is my favorite picture of my grandmother and I. And then the picture on the right is Nathan and my grandmother. Nathan was about three months there, and now he's 10 years old. Um, I, some of you already know that I grew up in Seattle, and my grandmother helped to raise me there. She taught me Cantonese, uh, mainly through hours and hours of kung fu dramas. <laughs> so I have all this random Cantonese vocabulary that I have no use for. Uh, <laughs> She was the first person in my family that I introduced Jerry to, because we were that close. Um, she loved to go to McDonald's, and her favorite was filet of fish with tons of ketchup. She would smack her lips on it all the time, and Jerry thought that was so cute. And she loved french fries dipped in vanilla ice cream. <laughs> my Popo was a devout Buddhist her whole life. From the time that I became a Christian in 1995, God placed it on my heart, at the forefront of my heart, to bring my grandmother to know Jesus. She didn't have a lot of joy, she didn't have a lot of hope, and she had a lot of burdens, and I, and I believe this is because she lived a really tough life. She had six children, but only two survived into adulthood. Three of her sons died at a young age due to sickness. One of them died on her back as she fled from the Japanese. Another son later died in a drowning accident. So she really knew loss. That left only my uncle, and then 13 years later, she had my mother, who was her, her last child and her only daughter. But as soon as my grandmother was born, my grandfather abandoned the family. And so my grandma, my papa, was just so familiar with loss, with suffering, and just being alone. As for as long as I knew her, she was in a prison of her bitterness and her anger. I prayed for 12 years for my grandmother to accept Jesus. Every time I tried, she gave me the same answer. I'm too old, I can't change my religion, I just can't do it. And I think what made a really big difference in her life was when God moved her out of her home and into a nursing home. It was actually a huge blessing. She no longer had that black shrine that she vowed to and prayed to and lit incense to multiple times a day. And I really believe that it was God's mercy that broke that bondage in her life. One very special day in the nursing home, I asked her, like many other times, if she would believe in Jesus. My in-laws always told me, keep it simple. And I did. I said, Grandma, I want to be with you in heaven forever. And that particular day, she said, Okay. And I was so overwhelmed, and I knew that God had touched her heart. And I was so emotional and in tears, and we prayed together. That was just one of those moments that I'll never forget and cherish forever. And then when I looked up, it was really odd, because there was this scary Chinese man a distance away on a walker, an old man. And he looked really, really angry, and he started approaching us <laughs> on his walker. And it felt oddly like it was symbolic that the devil wasn't happy uh, that my grandma now believed. Not to say that the devil is an old Chinese man, but, <laughs> but it really freaked me out. And so I quickly wheeled her to the dining area because it was time to eat anyways. And I put her in her spot. And then I'll never forget this. She turned to her table mate and she said, this is my granddaughter. She believes in Jesus. I was so blown away because I really felt like she knew what had just happened. At 96 years old, she too believed in Jesus now. A short while later, we wanted to get her baptized. And so we asked the pastor there to do it. And that day, my entire non-believing family came. None of them were Christians. It's just me and my grandma now. And it was remarkable because she was completely lucid and aware, and when the pastor asked her if she believed, 
She said, yes, do you want to follow Jesus and have faith? She said, yes. And the pastor sprinkled the water on her. And my family was blown away. They couldn't believe how lucid she was that day. And they couldn't stop talking about it. Shortly, um, shortly after she died, she died a few months after that. And it wasn't long after, I was already living down here, that I get a phone call from my brother. And my brother says, well, Paul came to me in a dream. And she said, Wes, why don't you believe? I believe now. You should believe too. So he called me and he said, Jay, I, I know it's from God. And that day, all alone, he said, he said the sinner's prayer. And he believed. It wasn't long after that that my parents started going to church. And then they were baptized together in 2010. God is so good that while he moved us down here and he was working on me and calling me to serve in this church, he was taking care of my family and answering my prayers and giving me my greatest, deepest heart's desire. And I knew that God could reach the farthest of hearts, the hardest of hearts, and he can move mountains to reach these people. And he did it all without me. I always love that part of the story that he saved my family and he didn't even use me. <laughs> I wasn't living there then. Now um, I'd like to talk about why Paul. This is Jerry's grandmother. As I mentioned before, we, we moved to Thousand Oaks in 2007, and this is when I became a lot closer to Wycliffe. On the left is Nathan and Jenna with her, and on the right it's um, me and Emmy. One funny story of how I knew that Grandma loved me and she treated me like one of her own was when she found out one weekend that Jerry and I took the kids camping, and it was October. So a week after, we went to visit, and like usual, I sat down next to her, and she immediately said, I heard you went camping. It's October. It's a terrible idea. It's, she said, Tai Lung La. Yeah, she just gave me the hardest time. And I said, but Grandma, a lot of other families were going. She said, I don't care. You don't go. And then she proceeded to spank me, like twice, on my thigh. And I didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. <laughs> But it was just odd to be spanked by a 90-something-year-old. I'm in my late 30s. Anyhow, she, I knew she loved me, and uh, I knew that she was such a living example of a life dedicated to Christ. In contrast to my grandmother, she lived the majority of her life following God, dedicated to Him, her family, the church, and most of all, she was dedicated to prayer. She was married to Jerry's grandfa grandfather for 78 years. They married at 18, they had six children, and during the war, they were forced to flee their home. And she was actually known to help people and feed the, the refugees, the homeless that would come through their town, feed them kanji. And she was actually in town known to be the woman that would help you if you needed anything. And some people died, and they didn't have anyone to bury them. And Waipo was the one that many went to, and they would ask, if I, if I don't make it, I, I, can you please bury me? Can you go tell my family what had happened? For decades later, she lived her, her life this way. Um, in this very church, she was always looking for people to bless, to serve, to pray for. She was also a mighty prayer warrior. That is like the best description of her. She loved to pray, and she told us whenever we shared anything with her, you have to pray. Jerry's cousin Jessica, when she would spend the night at Waipo Waipo's house, she said she'd always wake up to the sound of their prayers, their voices praying together every morning. <coughs> My brother-in-law, Jimmy, that many of you know, also sought her prayers, especially in his search for a wife. He recalls one time Waipo ran into him at church, and he was just wearing a ratty t-shirt and shorts and flip-flops, and uh, she pointed at his clothes and says, I pray so hard for you, you are not helping. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love that story. Another time, her daughter, Aunt Nancy, her youngest daughter, asked Waipo to pray that she could find a new job. She was having a hard time with her boss, and she loved her job, but she just asked if her mom could pray. And a few days later, Nancy's boss got a job transfer. 
And so Nancy asked her mother, have you been praying for me? And she said, yes. <coughs> and she said, but you, you know, you haven't been praying how I told you to pray. And Wyckoff said, no, I didn't. Did something change? Is your boss gone? <laughs> and Nancy replied, yes, he got a job transfer. And Wyckoff said, good, because that's what I prayed for. <laughs> you said you loved your job, so why should you have to move? He could move instead. There are countless stories just like this of Wyckoff's really special relationship with the Lord. She lived out the Proverbs 31 woman in, a, in every way. And what an example she was to us all. And I was so blessed to have her in my life. This picture of Emmy and I on the right with Wipel was a week before she passed away. I, brought, I bought her that bright colored, salmon colored jacket because she loved color. Anytime I wore dark black, she'd shake her head and didn't like it. Um, so I put that on her and then we took a selfie. Then I showed her right away and she said, I'm telling <laughs> I think she always knew, people joke, but she always knew she was very pretty. I had the honor of being by her side when she passed away. It was a life-changing day, to say the least, to experience her life on this earth coming to an end right in front of me. And I, it really challenged me. I really had to know what I believe, that her story doesn't end in, in death. And that none of us, our story doesn't end in death. Jesus overcame death, and in him we have eternal life with God. These two amazing moms, these women, they came to Christ at different times, and their lives look vastly different. But God used them both to impact the generations. Because of my Paul's faith, my brother believes, and now his children and his children's children will believe. It says in Psalm 78, we will all, we will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done so the next generation will know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn will tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God. Wipel's faith extended to her six children and their spouses, their six spouses. She had 12 grandchildren and 11 of them married, so her faith extended to the 11 grand grandchildren-in-law, like myself. And then now she has 21 great-grandchildren, because Jimmy's son was born after she passed. And they were all born into a Christian home and will be raised to trust in Jesus. This one life and 56 lives affected directly for Christ, and not to mention the many, many that she impacted in her community. In closing, my challenge to you is this. Are you living the life you want to live for God? Our time on earth here is finite, and Eventually, it comes to an end. And are you living in such a way that will impact generations to come? If you look around, God has given us many examples of people he used to change the course of life for other people. And if you don't have that example in your family, you can be that person. And you can be the first person in your family that God changes and the legacy can begin with you. And the legacy is much more than just about having children. And about, it's about impacting others around you for the cause of Christ. That can happen at any time and anywhere. I pray that each of you could just be inspired by my two grandmothers to make your own legacy, all with the help of a powerful, powerful mighty God. So thank you so much for allowing me to share about my grandmothers. God bless and happy Mother's Day.